Hello everybody, this is Pastor Sean Fleeman. I'm with All Nations International Fellowship and I'm glad to be with you today. We will be talking about the topic of virtual missions. You know, Jesus told us that we should go into all the world and that we should preach the gospel to every creature. And the great thing about that is, is he never laid out any specifics on how we should go or what means we should use in, in doing so. And we know that Jesus was one that he told parables, he told stories, he preached, he healed the sick, he, he did everything he could within his wheelhouse to reach people and to preach the gospel. He empowered others. And so that's what I'm hoping to be able to do with you today is one of those things is uh, empower you in some techniques and some areas in this category of virtual uh, missions. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let me just give you a few facts about myself. Uh, i am uh, been living here in China for uh, close to four years now, not quite four years, and uh, I'm married and I'm pastoring, uh, co-pastoring a church with my wife and been doing uh, media and uh, ministry, uh, TV, filmmaking for um, maybe close to 15 years now. So I've got quite a lot of experience in this area. Went to Victory Bible College, where I both went to film school as well as Bible school, and had a great experience and learned a lot there. So I have a good foundation, strong foundation. And so I hope to be able to use that to help you and to encourage you and to build your faith and help us get in uh, get get moving in this direction of virtual missions. Amen. Let's get started on it. So virtual missions could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Specifically for me, uh, it's talking about how we preach the gospel on a uh, media level with media. And my sp specialty in media is with... Uh, Photography, videography, cinematography, lighting, things like that, editing. And so tonight, I hope to be able to uh, use this program to teach you some tools, to teach you some ideas, some principles, some some basic things about church media. And my presentation tonight is entitled Church Media from the Ground Up. And you can also find my book, which is available by the same name, Church Media from the Ground Up. It's available on Kindle as an ebook for eight ninety nine uh, U.S. dollars, as well as uh, in a paperback form for eleven ninety nine. So both of those are available for you on Amazon. You know, I've got a, a founding scripture that I use here for this program, Luke three six, which says. And all people will see God's salvation. And that's kind of my goal, is to reach people and help them to see what God is doing, and to help them to know God, to know Jesus through video, through media, through filmmaking. And uh, there's this quote here by Steven Spielberg, which says, This opportunity allows all of us to reach out directly to open a much wider door. And I think that when we start doing virtual missions and we start doing uh, some more videos and making our videos more quality and making them more excellent, that we're going to reach more people faster than we ever have been able to do before. And that's my goal, and that's what I want to be able to do. Let's look here at this first slide, uh, which has got some more quotes on it that I think will inspire us on the topic of live event video production. You know, that's one of the first things we can do uh, in virtual missions is that we can have a live conference or a live preaching and we can record that and we can make it uh, in this day and age, even with cell phones or uh, small cameras, you can make it look as good as someone that has a uh, multi-million dollar setup. So let's take a look at this this first slide and it says here, Cinematography is infinite in its possibilities, much more so than music or language. 
What matters to every theater maker I know is speaking clearly to the audience right now. And that is our goal, is to speak clearly to our audience, which is the, maybe it's the saved, when you're pre preaching or speaking to the Christians uh, through media, or maybe it's those that are unsaved and you're trying to reach the unreached through media. And I've got written here, it says, the church's videographer is one of the most important messengers. They take the message that was preached or taught on a Sunday and deliver it to a mass audience. The videographer is the bridge to a much wider world. To start with, I'd like to take a look at some um, different terms. And some of these terms are going to help us know uh, how to maneuver the camera, whether we're using a professional camera or you're using a cell phone, you're going to use these terms and these moves uh, in all that you do. And so let's look at the first one, which is a pan. To pan the camera, um, you move from left to right or right to left in a slow, deliberate motion. This should lead the eye of your viewer to your desired subject. A tilt. To tilt the camera, move up or down. This is usually attached to one of the other maneuvers. For instance, you might tilt the camera up or down and pan to the right to lead to the subject. A push. This is the same as zoom in. The push is always slow and timely. It finishes on the desired subject and it is framed up when you want to stay. Some other examples of some maneuvers are pull. This is the same as zoom out or widen the shot. A pull out is not really a maneuver to lead the eye to the subject. Instead, it is used to reveal the surrounding area, such as the stage or auditorium. Truck. To truck is to move the entire camera pod altogether. If you buy a dolly to go on your tripod, you can unlock the wheels and physically truck the camera to a new spot while filming. Boom. The boom maneuver is your money maker shot. A boom crane has a camera mounted on the end, allowing for big, arching, sweeping, epic shots. Okay. Let's look here at some other definitions. We have ISO or gain, depending on the type of camera you're using. But this is a cinematographer's tool uh, to expose the subject to light. Uh, noted that uh, you kind of want to look at... Please note that you want to try to get the ISO as low as possible so that you have less grainy image. That being said, if you're shooting most places that are inside, you're going to have to raise the ISO uh, to a, a higher level and sometimes to a level that's undesired. Um, and this is going to create a more grainy image, but you may need to do so in order to expose more light to the subject. So it's just give and take, deciding on how much grain you want to have in your image. If you don't want to have any grain, then you will need to add extra light to your subject. Shutter speed. Uh, this is a term for film uh, where originally film was uh, shot at 24 frames per second. For shooting video, I advise 60 frames per second. I just think it's going to look smoother and cleaner and give you a better product in the end. Aperture or f-stop. Now, if you're shooting with a phone, you're probably not going to use this feature. But if you're shooting a more professional camera, you're going to use this quite a lot. So it just depends on what you're doing. But an aperture f-stop measures the wide aperture or f-stop measures the width of the opening of the shutter. And so a such as an f2 opening is going to be a very large opening and it's going to let in a lot of light and f11 is going to be a very small opening and let in uh, very little light so again you have give and take 
uh, depending on what you're wanting to shoot and where you're shooting at. White balance. White balance is simply the correct color um, of light on the subject. So you might look at your subject and you might see that there is some natural sunlight coming in. There's some lights from the ceiling. Maybe there's some spotlights on them or film lights. And so your camera has to decide or you've got to tell the camera what the true temperature of the light is. You might have warm light, cool light, all kinds of different lights coming in. And the white balance is simply balancing that together to tell the appropriate temperature of light uh, on the subject. Okay, we are continuing with the next slide. Now, if you're using a mobile phone, the best app that I've seen for live event broadcasting is going to be the Switcher app. I really have enjoyed using this app before. Several times I've used it and it works really well. You can link up to up you can link up to 9 iPhones or iPads together uh, on the Switcher app and you can uh, also designate one of them as a director uh, iPhone or iPad and so you can cover the the subject you can cover your talent from many different angles all while uh, choosing which angle you want to 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 record from so I really like it I think it's really nice let's look at a few more slides concerning the switcher app okay you can see the menu in this switch your app here and you can see that it can connect to social media there's audio input options and you can have a variety of uh, flexibility when you are recording also you can see here under the menu options you have automatic or manual focus you have automatic exposure or manual exposure and you have automatic or manual white balance. And so a lot of the terms that we just used are all available for you here. And so you have a, a lot of flexibility, a lot of creative control with this device. Also, you have some natural uh, in in camera cuts that you can do, cross dissolves, wipes, cubes, different things like that. Uh, if I'm directing, I'm just using a cut. At the most, I'll use a cross dissolve. I just think it looks more natural and more professional to use one of those two and not one of these other fancy uh, dissolves or cube spins or wipes. Here's a shot here. You can see the live event video production, the switcher app in, uh, in the manual mode that you might want to use it in or in the horizontal uh, position that you want to use it in. You know, if you really are wanting to shoot professionally with a phone, stop shooting in a vertical form. It just doesn't look as good. You, uh, you're not going to look as professional. And one simple thing you can do to up your video game is to turn the phone into a horizontal position such as this. Okay. So let's continue on. We're going to take a look here now at film production film production film production for your church can have a very different look you can create announcement videos teaching videos testimony videos and more film production is about telling a more intimate story film production takes more time to plan out each shot to move lights as needed to change lenses and be more deliberate the process is more of an art than a science. And I have written here, film production is a tighter wound machine. Whereas with broadcasting, you're simply just recording or capturing the events that are happening in front of you or on stage. Film production is the opportunity to stop, slow down, m make changes, you know, do do-overs, and really create the story or the look that you are going for. But let's get down to some more of the bolts and nuts of mobile phone 
videography or cinematography. For this, I really like a few different tools, such as the Moment Lenses. They have available to you a 18 millimeter uh, wide lens, a 58, or you, I think you can still get the 60 millimeter telephoto lens. There is even a anamorphic lens available to you. An anamorphic is going to give you the extra wide cinema look with a sort of a J.J. Abrams flare going on with it. You can get those really nice cinematic flares with a anamorphic lens. So there's some really good um, technology available to you. Uh, I like the moment lenses because these aren't just cheapo lenses that you can get anywhere. This this is real uh, metal and glass that you uh, screw into the, the camera on the front. You have a special case that it screws into and uh, it really enhances the look of your image, I think. Another great option here is the Shotgun Mic MV88 and that just plugs right into the uh, into your phone and it uh, works through an app and you're going to get some really high quality audio through this little mini shotgun mic and so that's a few of the just simple tools that you can use when shooting filmmaking on a phone some other things to think about when you're shooting on a phone is a mobile phone slider. Now, I have learned the hard way. Do not just go out and buy the cheapest slider you can find. It may be a little bit expensive, but it will elevate your video game to the next level if you can get some motion shots on a slider, and you will be very happy that you do. Now, you don't have to get the most expensive one, but don't be fooled by the little cheap ones, too. This is going to give you really nice smooth pans to the right or to the left. And instead of arching like a tripod uh, head will do, it's going to pan completely to the right or completely to the left. And it's going to be a, a lot nicer image than a tripod pan is going to be. Speaking of tripods, my suggestion is Manfrotto or Stanford and Davis. Those are the best tripods in the business that I've used, that I've really enjoyed working with, and I think that they will serve you uh, quite well too. Now, on to film production mobile phone apps. I like a couple different apps that you can get. There's the Moment app that works really well with the Moment lenses. Alternatively, there is also the Filmic Pro app, which I have enjoyed using, and it really has a lot of customizable settings to it that's going to help you make your video look uh, more professional. And if you're shooting on a phone, it's going to give you some more customizable uh, options to make it uh, more like shooting with a DSLR or an actual film camera. Uh, I have the app as well, and I have enjoyed using it. All the way on the left-hand side, there is a little color wheel. And in that color wheel option is where you're going to set the white balance. And there's also some other coloring filters and uh, things that you can get into there if you want to pay the extra money for that. To the graphic to the right of that is a little wheel. Now, if you hit that wheel, it's going to bring up autom uh, not automatic. It's going to bring up manual focus and manual zoom. So you can use your thumb and you can scroll in and focus, or you can zoom in, and that's going to, uh, if you really want to fine tune your 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 zoom or fine tune your your focusing. And that's the way you're going to be able to do that. Now, next to that, so the little graphic that looks like an A, uh, is going to be several other options that you can look at, including the zebra stripes, which I like. Zebra stripes are just going to tell you if there is a image in your uh, in your screen or an object in your screen that is overly 
highlighted or overly exposed you're going to see several stripes show up on that and you want to try and set your settings on your camera so that you don't have those zebra stripes on there and that you're not overexposed on a certain area of the screen now in the middle you can see the menu there and you can see that this is set for 24 frames per second at 1080p and uh, that's what we're recording that now you can change those settings you can go up to 4k on my camera my phone camera and you can go up to even uh, 120 frames per second I believe and you can do that from the gear graphic on the right hand side and that's where you're going to be able to change the the resolution and you can also change the shutter speed frame rate different things like that in that gear graphic moving on you see the play button that's where you can go in and play your material to see what you filmed and see what you think of it and finally on the right hand side all the way to the right you have the record button and that's where you're going to stop and start recording at so the filmic pro i really love it if you're going to shoot with mobile phone uh, it's one of the best ones on the market, and I highly advise that. Let's move on to microphones. Microphones are very important to consider when shooting filmmaking, and even something you should consider even if you're doing mobile phone videography. The first is the omnidirectional microphone. This type of microphone can pick up sounds equally from all directions. You can count on it to be very balanced in its ability to receive sound from any side this is really ideal for groups of two to three people possibly even more directional this is a type of microphone that only picks up sounds that are right in front of it these sounds will come out sounding very crisp and clear but it does not pick up sound from any other direction and supercardioid this is a directional mic with a very narrow pickup pattern. It is very selective in picking up sound so as not to pick up ambient noise or background noise. Moving on, my personal mic of choice is the Rode Wireless Go Lav mic system. This is small, it's easy to maneuver, it's easy to carry, it's hot, you can hide it very uh, easy. Uh, it's professional mobile system, miniature wireless lavalier mic, uh, miniature transceiver that can be clipped to the camera for all uh, under 200 US dollars. You will not be disappointed with this setup. I really enjoy this setup. Be lighting on how to set up the scene. It's very important when you're filming something to have good lighting. Variables to keep in mind are color, light, texture, and mood. All of these are factors on how the final image is going to come out, how it will look and appear to audiences, and what effect it will have on them. Film director Ron Howard said, A lot of what we perceive in life has to do with light. And that's very important. You can have a cool light on somebody. And then the same uh, person, also you can put a warm light and they can look totally different depending on the type of light or shadow you create and put on them. So it's important to think about your lighting and how that's going to look. Okay, here is a picture of your basic four-point lighting setup. You can see the subject is in the middle. Off to the right hand side you have the key light. That's going to be the most powerful light. You're going to shine that at a maybe 45 degree angle down on the subject. That is not a hard uh, rule, but you, it's usually a good rule. So the key light is going to light them, and, but that is also going to create a lot of harsh or weird looking shadows which is where the fill light comes in at on the left hand side you want to pop a fill light on the subject to eliminate those shadows and make a cleaner image now on the back hand side the right back hand side you have the backlight or hair light and that is going to help give some 
depth and separation between the backdrop and your subject, and that is also going to give you a little um, halo effect around your subject, and it's just going to illuminate them a little bit better. Finally, you have your background light, which you're going to use to light the background and to make it uh, pop up a little bit more so that it doesn't become muddied or blend in too much um, to your wall. So those are your four basic lights that you're going to use uh, when you are filming. Let's take a look here at this picture. This is a picture that I took from Ken Burns, who is a professional documentary filmmaker. And you can see uh, that's a really nice image. And this is his simple setup here. He's only using a key light, which is next to his camera. And then he's got a flag here, a white flag that he's got posted up off to the right-hand side. And that light is going to also bounce off of that flag and uh, come in and light the side of the subject up a little bit, just a little soft light there. And so you can see that you don't always need, uh, you know, four or five, six different lights to light something. If you've got a one nice light a flag, uh, you can uh, you can really make some magic work here. And you can see that uh, even with a professional filmmaker like Ken Burns, He's just using a couple of different tools. So something to consider when you're looking at lighting or looking at buying something. You can get away with less is more if you understand the, the properties of light and how it works and what you can get away with. So that's something to consider there. Now I'm going to show you this little image here. This is the Lytra Torch which I'm considering myself buying. It's only 75 US dollars. Uh, it's got three settings on it, high, medium, and low. It comes with a diffuser to cast the light and a little uh, rubber box to keep your hands from getting burnt by the light if it gets too hot. Uh, but you can get a couple of these and, uh, and one on high, another one on maybe medium or low, and that can be your key light and your fill light right there. If you get a flag like we showed in the last uh, slide. You can use one light to light the subject and also light the flag which is going to bounce that light onto the the subject on the right or the left whatever you're working with and that's going to create some some nice lighting on your subject. Well the first idea or the first thing you maybe need to think about when you're doing green screen is maybe instead to use a blue screen. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but there are some differences. And let's take a look here at what Mr. McCleary, from, who is the uh, cinematographer from Star Wars The Force Awakens, on what he has to say about the differences between blue screen and green screen. And I think that you might be convinced that a blue screen will work better for your church production. And he says here, generally when you're working in a low light environment, which mm, probably includes all of us, unless you've got a full uh, bril brilliantly lit studio, where the screen has to be close to the actors or talent, there's less contamination from blue than from green, and it's easier to key out. Blue is better for low light. Okay, so... As I said before, unless you've got a really well-lit studio, which not all of us do, you may consider using the blue screen or having some kind of solid blue wall. Now, the way it works is the, you know, most people don't have blue in their skin tone, so the your face is not going to get keyed out when you do your keying and your editing. Uh, so blue screen may be something that you may want to take a look at. However, if you do decide on a green screen, there are some certainly some thoughts here that we need to think about. And I would suggest instead of a carpet screen that you use or some kind of um, uh, material that you use, you could paint a wall solid green and that way it's solid, it's flat, you don't have to worry about stretching it out. 
because if you do use some kind of material you've got to really pull it tight and then you've got to be able to light it uh, from top to bottom uh, as evenly as possible which means you either need some bigger lights or more powerful lights uh, or more lights and so because you really got to be able to get that um, well lit and evenly lit and then you've got to have a separate and then you've got to have a separate set of lights to light your subject with so you can see that doing green screen creates uh, a lot of need for lights and a lot of lights that you're going to need. So that's the first rule of lighting a green screen is you need a lot of lights to get it evenly lit. And then you still have to make certain that you don't cast weird shadows. You've got enough space to light the subject as well. So a lot of of space is needed here and a lot of things to think about of course if you do go ahead and shoot something you need to then enter it into your editing software I'm using in this image I'm using iMovie which is a free software if you have a if you have an Apple computer so when editing with iMovie lay down the background image you will use Set the video clip on the upper track, then select the clip. We're going to choose the square button in the upper left hand corner. A drop down option appears, which is green or blue screen. Check that, then you can adjust accordingly. So if you're if you've got some shadows on there or if you've got some wrinkles, you're going to need to use the eraser tool or use your little nodes to try to cut some of those things out or try to erase those shadows as best as possible, which brings us right back to your lighting. If you don't have good lighting, you're going to have to make up for it in the editing process. So it's important to have to have good lighting so that you can skip that part. Otherwise, it's pretty easy. You just lay that track down, you put the video on top, and now you've got um, your subject in front of whatever background you want, if you so choose to do that. Now, I don't really like green screen myself. I prefer to have an actual background, but you decide what is best for you and your needs. Okay, now... Having done all that and said all that, I think that we should take a look now at editing because this is also very important. All right, let's look at editing. Now, there are many different editing softwares out there. There's iMovie, as I've mentioned. There's the big brother of iMovie, which is Final Cut Pro which I use. Uh, there's also Adobe Premiere, which is available on Mac or PC. There's DaVinci Resolve, which is also a up and coming software that you can use. So any of those are good for you. And quite frankly, all of them work about the same way. They all do the same things. They just do them differently depending on the the software that you're using so I've got a, a little couple quotes here that I like Steven Spielberg says uh, I love editing it's one of my favorite parts about filmmaking so there you go you got it from the master himself editing can be a lot of fun because it's where you bring the ingredients that you've been filming or broadcasting and you put them together and make your final product. Elizabeth Ross from telecommunications degree tells us when I took my editing training in the 80s editing was so complicated you had to uh, hand turn big spools of VHS tape and it could take hours to make one or two cuts. Today digital editing, it, today, digital editing is a breeze. Okay so
as you can see editing has come a long way but there's still some basic rules and principles that you'll need to abide by in order to have a successful editing time let's look at some tools editing so we have some terms here we're going to use which is the sequence uh, the timeline where you do most of your work your media bin where all of your media is stored video audio and graphics effects panel where your video effects and transitions are located and viewing panel where you view the sequence as you make edits okay here is an example this is actually Adobe Premiere's interface uh, as you can see with Final Cut, if you are using that, it's going to look very similar. It's just a little bit different uh, in the specifics. So here's my basic editing rules because I don't have time to teach you every single specific thing about each program. We're going to go through the major rules of Sean Fleeman's editing. So lay down the wide angle track. This is your base, your master shot. Uh, this is going to be your anchor for everything else. Line up the audio from the sound booth and the video. Number three, match the audio spikes to the video audio spikes. Then separate and delete the video audio, video's audio. Repeat this process for each camera angle that you lay down in the sequence and then start to build your program. We're going to cut down the program so that it starts and ends where you want it. Make sure it meets your allotted time. Start the program with a wide establishing shot. This tells the audience where the service is happening. Vary between the wide, head-to-toe, medium shot, and close-up if you have them. Never cut between the same shots if you can help it. For example, don't cut to a different head-to-toe shot if you are already on a head-to-toe shot. Never show a shot for too long. Keep the program moving along. Even if the speaker is just standing still, it's the speaker's job to preach it's your job to move the show along. Make sure you cut out jerky camera shots, slow movements, too fast movements, shots of the wall, or obscure shots. Encourage church members to move forward in their seats. This will fill in gaps and your program will look better. Keep the pace of the program. All right. You know, in conclusion, I think about a story that filmmaker Martin Scorsese says, and he talked about how he considered either going into the priesthood or being a filmmaker, you know, and ultimately, of course, he ended up being a filmmaker. And, but I, I, I get to thinking about that thought. I get to thinking about his statement. And I think, you know, many of us that are called into the ministry, but maybe we have a passion for filmmaking why can't we do both? We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. He's the teacher. He's the guide. He's the motivator. He's our peace, you know, and he can be the one that's going to help us do this virtual missions and help us to create excellence in video and create excellence in media. And so we need to rely on the Holy Spirit. We need to rely on the teacher and the counselor to help us to know what to do and when to do it and what direction to take and and who to bring along in our path to help us with that and so as we're doing these virtual missions I encourage you to to pray in the Holy Spirit and to seek his guidance and uh, you know the Bible says that my sheep know my voice and so if you need the Holy Spirit you can you can claim that you believe you receive more of the Holy Spirit. You can claim you believe you receive by faith the Holy Spirit in the language of speaking in tongues. And the Bible says that you can know his voice and you can know the will of God through that. And so if you're desiring to do virtual missions and if you're desiring to do videos and media and different things like that, that's, that doesn't have to be a, a separate side thing in the church. That can be a valuable 
and prominent ministry and you can let the Holy Spirit and you can let Jesus help you and, and, and guide you and teach you how to do this. And I hope that you were able to receive something today from this teaching and from this uh, lecture. And if you'd like to know more, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can reach me. Uh, my contact information is here and you can see that. And I just want to say God bless you. And uh, and hope that I will see some more of your content on social media platforms uh, across the world. Amen.